In this video, we're going to talk about factory functions. So what are factory functions? Factory functions are functions that create and return new objects. A single function can create different types of objects that share similar properties and methods. In this video, we're going to have a quick explanation of factory functions, followed by a simple example, and then we're going to move on to a more realistic example of factory functions. JavaScript is kind enough to give us a simple way to create objects. So we can say const person equals, and then use the object literal syntax to create a person object. We can give this person properties such as name. I'm going to call my person John. We can give them an age. I'm going to give them an age of 30. And I'm going to give them a job of teacher. We can also provide methods on our objects, and methods are simply functions that live on an object. There's two different ways we can add methods to an object. The first is to use a key, so I can use the key presenter, and then I can assign this key a function, and the function can return a string. And inside of this string, we can say, hello, my name is, and we can use properties from our object with the this keyword. So I can say this.name. I am this dot age years old and my job is this dot job. The second way to add methods to our object is to use the function syntax. So when we define a function, we simply use the function keyword function set age. We can take in some arguments. We can move this function onto our object and omit the function keyword. In set age, I'm going to take a new property called new age, and I'm going to set age to new age. So I can say this dot age is equal to new age. And finally, we can use this person object. So I can say person dot presenter. And if I change our presenter method to console.log, so we can see the output. And then we run our application. You can see that this dot name is filled in with the name John, age is filled in with 30, and job is filled in with teacher. So that is how we would create an object literal in JavaScript. But what happens if we need to create many objects in our code? Well, we can use the factory pattern to do that. I'm going to create a factory called create person. I say function create person. And our function is going to take three properties, name, age, job. And we can simply return a new object. And inside of our object, we can prefill name, age, job. And we can copy our presenter and set age properties from our person object. And we can paste those onto our create person factory. And we can use our factory by saying const Jane is equal to create person name is Jane, age is 30, and job is teacher. And next we can say Jane dot presenter, Jane dot set age, and we'll set her age to 31, and then we'll say Jane dot presenter again. If we execute this function, you can see that we get, hello, my name is Jane, I'm 30 years old and my job is a teacher. Then we change Jane's age and we get the same, but 30 is switched out now for 31. You'll sometimes see, you'll sometimes see factories created with the new keyword in JavaScript, but you don't need this keyword here. And it's best to omit it because it's redundant. So now let's have a look at a more real life example of where you would use a factory function. So we have this HTML file here. And this HTML file creates a new graph with this CC net viz. And our graph consists of some styles. We have some nodes and then we have some edges. And then we're going to call graph.set and then we're going to draw the graph. This code works great, except if we need to create new nodes and edges, we're kind of stuck. We don't have a method to do that. And so I'm going to create a factory that's going to allow us to create new edges and new nodes. 
I'm going to create a constant and I'm going to call this factory. And by putting this factory inside of a new object allows us to keep all of the methods contained. However, I'd be careful about how many layers of abstraction you introduce into your application as each level of abstraction introduces more complexity. The first method that we're going to create is a create graph. And create graph is just going to return our new graph here. So I'm going to copy this code. I'm going to remove the var create graph. I'm simply going to return a new graph. I'm going to create a new method on our factory called create node. Create node is going to take one argument of a label and we're just going to return an object with a single property of label. My third and final method is going to be create edge. An edge is going to take a source property and a target. And I'm just going to return a new object with the source property and the target property. The first thing we need to do now is to create our graph. So I'm going to say const graph is equal to factory dot create graph. The next thing we want to do is to create our nodes. So I can remove all of the object literals from our nodes array, and I can replace these with factory dot create node. Inside of each node, we need a single property of label. And the last thing we need to do is to refact our edges. So I can remove all of our object literal from edges and I can say factory dot create edge or source and say nodes zero and our target is going to be nodes one. Then I'm going to copy this create edge function a few more times and replace the values. And we have one little problem with our create node, and that is that I called the same property inside of the create node function, whereas we need to call the create node function many times. So now you can see that we get the same result, but all of our creational code is contained inside of our factory object, and we now have these methods that we can use to create new nodes and edges for our graph. That has been an overview of the factory function. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comment section below which design pattern you would like to see next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.